Within this video, we will show you how to use Alumni as a caching system and therefore really upspeed and supercharge your integrations of only sending Delta versions of the data towards System B. What this means was briefly uh, introduced in the previous videos already. However, I will also explain it a little bit here. So let's say you pull in a thousand products and you would like to send those thousand products every minute towards System B. It's probably not that easily possible. However, if you only send the products that have like either a change or an update towards System B, you're probably sending like three to five, maybe 20 on a busy minute towards System B. And therefore it's very possible to keep all of that information flowing all the time. So let's see how to implement that within Alumio. So if you haven't seen yet how the data is pulled from one system to the other system, we would recommend you to watch the previous videos in this series first, and then come back to this video later. However, if you already seen it, let's continue with that. So we have the incoming configuration where it is, uh, where the data comes in through this route. So if we would apply the caching system, we would need two things. The first one is that we would have to apply the filtered previously uh, stored entities. This one, exactly. And we also would uh, have to have a storage where it could store the information too. So it knows in the next time that the information is called where it was stored. So for this, we would have to go to the storages. We would have to create a new storage. Let's once again call it getting started session and then storage. Within here, it's also possible to say the path to the storage. So the path to the storage is something similar to a file system, which also means I could write multiple storages to the same path. However, you would get like strange interaction with that because data could start to like semi overwrite themselves and such kind of things. So therefore we would like to use the identifier and paste that in the path to the storage because the identifier is always unique and therefore the path to the storage also becomes unique. We could also say, okay, we want to have data with a certain time to live. So it becomes like an actual caching system of saying like, okay, how often do we want to have the data deleted? For example, we want to delete everything after 10 hours or any minutes, days, weeks, or anything that's needed. Let's say it's not needed for this example. So from here, we can save that. We can check the entities that are in the storage right now, which we can see that there's nothing in the storage right now. It is also not possible to say like, hey, I would like to add like an entity that's called one, two, three with the values three, four, five. That is not possible because that all happens through these transformers. If you would say in a transformer, you create a payload of the one, two, three, uh, three, four, five, then you would actually be able to store that here, but you cannot like simply say here, I want to um, add like a entity that way. However, if something is already in here, you can edit it if you would like to. So if you go to the uh, income configuration, we can apply the storage over here. So now we can apply the storage. So we can select the storage that we just created. We have the comparison of eco, adaptive eco comparison, which means if data comes in and it is exactly the same as it was before, it will get filtered out. If it is changed, it will be sent through. And if it's new, it will also be sent through. After that uh, comparison check, it will also store the entities there right away. So you don't need to add another transformation to actually store those uh, data as well. So if we save this one uh, right now, we run the incoming once more, like we did before. We can see once more towards the logging. We can see that once we click on here, we can see that we have the response. With the response, we get the full object in there. And afterwards, we can also see that this line has now been added, that we uh, filled it out zero out of 10 because nothing was in the storage yet. We can also now verify that from the storage, if we go to the storage, we refresh this page, we can see that the storage is now filled. The storage is not necessarily a database, but it's a key value notation where the value is the complete object. What that simply means is that we have the key, which is the identifier, and then the value being the complete object. So from here, you, in the next time, you can do a comparison of seeing like if the data changed or anything like that. We can also see right now, if we go back to the task overview, that we have created like a 10 more tasks with, that are new. However, we could also say like, okay, let's say, we go back to the storage, we delete ID three, we delete this one to kind of tricks uh, the system of saying like this one was not in the system yet. We go back to the incoming configuration once more, we run the incoming configuration once more, we can go to the logging of the incoming configuration, we can check the logging once more and instead of filtering out zero out of 10 or 10 out of 10, it's uh, filtering out nine out of 10 because we only deleted one out of the storage and the other nine were still in the storage which we can then also verify if we go to the task overview, 
we can see that the number three that I deleted from the storage just now was added like seven or was added one minute after the other ones. So therefore it's easy to say like, okay, we have a caching system. We can pull in information all the time, but we're only actually bothering system B with information that's actually relevant for that system at that time. So that is the end of this video. Within the next video, we will show a few additional uh, settings within Alumio, and that will wrap up also the whole uh, demo of get the getting started session of Alumio. Thank you.